Armory Disc Golfers, welcome back to another video. I have spent hours watching footage of pro disc golfers analyzing how they weight shift and how they energy transfer, and I've discovered something that every single one of them do that I've somehow never seen anyone talk about before. So today, we're going to. Let's get into it. First, we're gonna talk about proper versus improper coil, and then I'm gonna give you the secret sauce that all pros do to make sure they get this right every time. So I'm jumping straight into the third stage of the throw. My X step is on the ground behind me, and I'm ready to get into my coil. And remember, as we're coiling our shoulders as a unit, we're focused on keeping our weight back in this back leg until this front foot hits the ground. So you want your coil to look more like this and less like this, which may look very similar, but the results are drastically different. Now, because you're using an X step or a run up or whatever, there is going to be some momentum this way in your throw. So your coil is going to have a bit of drift forward to it. But even here, my tension and my weight and my energy is in this back leg, not shifted forward into this front leg. If you're landing with a heavy front leg here, there's a couple problems with that, which we'll get into. First off, if you're landing on a loaded front leg and your weight is here, you don't have very much energy left to give the disc from here to here. I mean, compare the difference of the energy that you can get from here to here versus from here to here. And if that doesn't look drastic enough, again, stand up and feel it for yourself. Put your weight on your front leg and then try to get energy into the disc versus putting your weight on your back leg and now see how much energy you can get into this theoretical disc. Don't throw indoors. And because your legs are just about out of energy to give if you're landing on a loaded front leg, the energy that you do give the disc is going to come from your upper body and you're going to be arming, muscling the throw, and you're gonna have a very top heavy throw that transfers energy from the top down instead of from the ground up. And we want to transfer energy from the ground up, just like in any other sport. If you ever see someone who's top heavy, they're probably not performing a very athletic motion. If I'm guarding you in basketball and I'm standing up like this and you make a quick cut, then it's gonna take me a long time to move here, as opposed to if I'm already down and my weight is here, I can quickly and explosively move from side to side, which we want to transfer over into a disc golf throw. I'm gonna show you a couple quick ways to check yourself, and then I'm gonna show you two benchmarks that every pro hits to ensure that they're getting proper energy transfer and weight transfer into the disc so that they can throw it well every time. The first way to check yourself is just by feel. It's going to feel drastically different to land on your front leg here versus to land with your weight back coiled on your back leg here. So you're gonna feel the weight on your front leg versus the back leg, and you're going to feel this sort of ground up motion versus this top down motion. The second way to check yourself requires you to record yourself, which I highly recommend. And I'm really excited about this because somehow through my years of researching disc golf form, I've never seen anybody talk about these two things. So the first thing to check is that as this front foot lands, you want your front shoulder behind your front knee. You don't want it in line with your front knee and you definitely don't want it out over your front knee. And if it is, then that's a sign that your weight is too far forward too early. And it's also a sign that you're throwing with a top down energy transfer instead of a ground up energy transfer like you should be. So you want your front shoulder behind this front knee and you also want your shoulders perpendicular to the target. If you're landing and your shoulders are parallel to the target, then you've energy transferred too early, you've uncoiled too early, and you don't really have much <laughs> energy left to give the disc. I mean, look at the difference that you get between having your front shoulder in line with your front knee and having your shoulders parallel to the target instead of having your shoulder behind your front knee and your shoulders perpendicular to the target. And the amount of energy that I can transfer into the disc from here instead of here. Now these checks are based on shoulder position, but remember the whole point of this is to have proper weight and energy transfer from your legs up into the disc. You'll find that if your shoulders are perpendicular to the target, but your front shoulder is over this front knee, you can swing your upper body and throw that way, but you're not getting any leg action in there. And if your shoulders are behind your front knee, but you're parallel to the target, now you can give legs, but you don't really have much to give with your upper body here. Getting your shoulders back and coiled through this front foot striking the ground will give you plenty of time and energy to put into the disc, which is going to transfer to farther and more consistent throws. But again, I'm not just gonna force you to take my word for it. Let's jump in and see some professionals throwing. Paul Macbeth here, who again, like I've mentioned before, is known for being a forward facing thrower, shoulders turned back perpendicular from the target, shoulder well behind this front knee. And then even into the power pocket, his shoulder obviously is now parallel to the target because he's in the power pocket, but it's still well behind this front knee. 
Next, I'm going to look at Drew Gibson. I like looking at Drew and Paul because they're not six foot 12 with an infinite wingspan like some of these other guys that throw a quarter mile on tour, but they do a great job of utilizing their body, putting themselves in good, powerful positions so that they can still absolutely rip it as well. You see here that his foot has landed, his shoulder is still perpendicular, even more than perpendicular, away from the target still. His shoulder is well behind this front knee, and now he has so much energy potential to get into the disc, which, of course, he absolutely does. You're starting to see a pattern here. Simon Lazat also foot strike down onto the ground, shoulders parallel to target, well behind this front knee. And so now again, incredible coil like we looked at in the last video, he also has an incredible weight transfer so that his coil and his weight can uncoil and transfer forward at the same time. And you get Simon Lazat things whenever you do that. Eagle McMahon, even though he doesn't have the most weight to shift, he does it incredibly well and might be the farthest throwing golf line thrower in the world. You can see here, his foot is all the way planted on the ground. His shoulders are still perpendicular away from the target and well behind this front knee. And when you get such separation like this, you can utilize extremely efficient and explosive weight transfer, energy transfer, uncoiling of the shoulders. And just like these other guys that we've looked at, obviously Eagle absolutely gets it done throwing a disc down a fairway. And the last one that we'll look at, this is a classic disc golf form check video. And I thought that this one was cool. This is one that I've been staring at a lot recently. You can see every single one of these guys, I even let this video drift a little longer than I wanted. All of their feet are on the ground here solidly on the ground. I mean, we could even take this back a few frames here, but even with them being on the ground, you see these guys' shoulders well behind their front knee and turned backwards away to varying different degrees because we're all humans. We're not machines. Your body is built different than Paul Macbeth, than Will Shustrick, than Dave Feldberg, than Jeremy Colling. But if all of these people and everyone else that we've looked at get into these same explosive positions of power, then I think that it's probably a good idea for you and I to try to get into these same positions as well. And we can use this as a barometer and a check to make sure that we're keeping our weight back long enough so that then whenever it's time for that weight to go forward, we can do so in an efficient and explosive manner. So a couple things to help you incorporate this into your own game. I highly suggest you utilize standstill or one-step drills so that you can get used to this feeling instead of this feeling or this feeling or something like that. And the second thing is to remember to slow down whenever you're working on new pieces of your form. You're not going to be able to go out into a field and throw full power and get this exactly right. Things are gonna get wonky. You need to slow down a little bit. Don't be scared of taking one step back so you can take two steps forward. And I hope this does transfer well for you from a screen onto a field and then obviously onto a course. This is a huge piece of the disc golf throw, but it's obviously not the only piece of the disc golf throw. So subscribe because we're gonna be talking about more of them in future videos. Hope you enjoyed. Thank y'all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.